So I'll just do a little assessment and walk around. Uh, owner says he put two new front tires on it just now. That one is leaking for sure. Um, I don't even know if he put the valve stems on them, but uh, it could be a rusty rim or otherwise. They do look new, newer. Muffler's a little perforated there. Somebody has been repainting that bottom part and repainted the black onto the green, which kind of just detracts not from the value at all, but uh, just from overall looks. New carburetor not working properly. Um, you got uh, low speed, and then if you go high, it just goes berserk. Uh, the, something wrong with the governor there. Um, all he said was broken new carburetor broken spring well I don't know if the spring he meant is for the governor or I have no idea what the broken spring was because he wasn't there when I went to pick it up um, it's got the 36 deck it's 11 horse Briggs back, back tires were up on air when I got there looks like that one's a little low this one looks like it's up there um, it does have the bracket for the bagger, which this doesn't have the bagger, but the bracket is a nice little thing to have. Somebody put a hitch on it, a hitch ball, one and seven eighths inch. Uh, just a quick look at the blade down there. The blade looks very worn. Uh, it's it's all wing and very little. Let's see if I can get you on there. All wing and very little cutting surface. So that's not the best. Um, get you out here. Bring it up to the dash. Oh, as far as the deck, I tried it a couple times. It's got an electric PTO and the belt got thrown off. It's got a key switch, but somebody's put a PTO switch here. Why they didn't use the original hole. Things like that I don't have the answers for. And they wired it direct, not through the key, so it just runs whenever you hit it, which is not too safe. Uh, I'm looking down here at the wires. Oh, I thought that was a connector. That's just that's probably just a insulator of some sort from the charging system. Um, yeah, here's here's the rigged up wires that go down to the electric PTO. No battery. Um, what else under here? Oh, 11 horse Briggs. Like I say, it runs at full full throttle, uh, too fast or at idle only. Didn't sound like it was knocking though, so I decided to pick this one up as is. Um, other things, the uh, transmission. When you release that, it does not tension the belt, so it doesn't even go in any gear. Um, What's good about it? Well, it, it, it seems to be all here. Lower the deck down there. The uh, This belt is all the way in the groove and is completely worn down on the sides. You know, it's riding all the way in the groove there. 100% wore out. Um, the belt from the PTO to the deck, that's the one I have. I have not checked any of these spindles yet for quality or anything, but I uh, just wanted to give you a quick assessment of the new upcoming project. Um, it was very low on oil, and the gas in there looks good, believe it or not. I think that's probably because he was getting it running with that new carburetor, so he probably uh, flushed it all out during that process. Yeah, as far as the deck goes, uh, all those little wheels are there. I think they're kind of whittled down a little bit because they barely are contacting the ground and it's sitting on the ground almost so those that's probably uh, those probably should be a larger diameter than what's there uh, the seat it's got a seat cover on it I have never seen that seat cover for sale like that it's actually like a vinyl fitted cover kinda nice I'm gonna try to find something like that if it's got a part number on it I'm gonna I'm gonna look that up and uh, put that in the comments if, it, if there is such a thing but uh, anyway the uh, course of action is as follows get the engine running right whatever's wrong with the carburetor he put on or the governor or the spring if that's the spring that's missing get a good engine 
Then we're going to go for figuring out why the rear end isn't turning. Then if that's all good, deck, check the wheel bearings, things like that. If that's all good, then we'll re re rewire the PTO into the key switch so it can't turn on when uh, the key switch isn't on and uh, whatever else we find. We'll go through the deck, we'll go through the belts, we'll go through the pulleys, idlers, make sure this is a good, uh, you know, if everything goes good with the motor, we, we go with the next step. Otherwise, we may be looking at another parts machine or whatever, something of that line. Okay, so I'm gonna do the old bubble test on the tires. Um, I don't think I hear any hissing just out and out hissing coming out but uh, what I'm most suspicious of is you know a problem on the rim bead or especially the valve stem because it's customary that uh, when you replace a tire you always put a new valve stem on and that valve stem does not look new and the fact that the brand new tire is leaking leaves me even more suspicion so all I got is a little you can just use any spray bottle you got uh, I got Dawn disc detergent and um, water and you should see bubbles wherever the problem is and I see bubbles already that's not good There you go. We got a leaker right in the tread. I'm gonna have to clean that off and figure out what's going on there. Let's look for more while we're here. Let me get you zoomed in there in case you never saw one. How you can check it like like I'm doing. The bubbles will just keep coming up. You got to use like Dawn dish detergent, something with uh, a good uh, surfacant, I think they call it. The, the glycerin or whatever uh, really, really makes some nice bubbles for you. You can tell right away where it's coming from. Yeah, we got a big problem there. Now these back ones have dry rod. These are not new. These have dry cracks on the side. That happens from sun. And a lot of times, if you just have dry cracks on the sides, if it is leaking, you can get away with some tire sealant. There's different kinds. Some of them work, some of them don't. I don't see any immediate issues there, at least on the outside, which is usually the weather checking side. Insides usually rot much less because the sun doesn't get a hold of them. And if I didn't already mention, I just aired up all these tires. So we have, you know, good air pushing. Check that valve stem. Nothing, nothing I see there right off the bat. And then this one wasn't down when I got it, so it's probably good, but let's just check the valve stem and everything. I have no reason to believe that that one should should have any any leaks because it it was up on air when I got it. The lowest one was the uh, back left, and the front right was all the way down when I got it. So let's go look at our bubbles again. And that's more typical of what you'll see usually. The bubbles on the left here, these little foamy bubbles. Usually they're not big enough to go. Usually you don't have a leak that big, so I don't know what happened on the tread of that tire, but that does look like a brand new tire. Somebody ran over something, or I don't know, but I, I'm going to have to dry it off to even see what I need to fix. Okay, so easy find. Somebody's got a tire plug in there already that is not holding. 
so brand new tire not quite brand new we'll fix that let me try to get it get that old plug to just come out my guess is it's not much holding it in being that it's leaking everywhere Yeah, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. There you go. I just pushed it in. Won't hurt anything in there. All right, I got the repair area dried up a little. Go through with the rasp a little bit. Do that to get all the boogers out of there. And we're going to do what they didn't. We're going to fold this over. I think they put it in one one thick, and that's not enough for a rig tech typical uh, typical puncture. And you never want to use these kind of plugs on a car tire. If they come out suddenly, the car will lose control possibly, especially if you did it on the front end. Just fine for something that only moves five miles an hour. that I don't like. Let's try another one. Let's see if we have better luck. That one's going down farther. Cut off the excess. All right, let me air it up and we'll do a test, air another bubble test. So as you can see, my plug went down in there like a V. There's a V at the bottom and there's two pieces sticking out the top and they'll just mold together because that stuff is real squishy. And uh, it's got like some fibers in there too. I don't know what you call it, but uh, the fibers will help the rubber hold in place instead of just ooze back out of there. So let's see what we got. I don't see any bubbles. We got a winner. Okay, so we're off to a good start. We've got four tires that have a good chance of holding air, especially the front two, because they're new. Um, now it's mobile, or at least rollable, uh, which really helps out on a project if you don't have to struggle every time and get out the air compressor every time you try to move it. Plus, then you're going to shred out your brand new tire potentially, or it's going to pop off the bead and be difficult to get back on. So. Handle the tires first, make the project mobile, it'll go a lot easier for you. Next, let's see what we can do on that engine. I want to make sure that engine's good and it runs even and, you know, it's not going to burn a bunch of smoke if it runs for longer than, you know, the few seconds I tried, tried it out for. So let's make sure we got a good viable candidate before we go any further with anything else. Before I do anything, I've got this on the ground now because it's a little difficult to get at on the trailer because you're kind of reaching over. I'm going to get some oil in there. It is critically low. I do have the engine tilted a little bit forward where it's sitting here. It looks flat, but it's not. Let me get a little oil in here. See where that brings us. Oh, we're looking over full, but that's good because it's probably still flowing down in there. All right, now we got some protection for our engine. Before I even run this engine anymore, I just want to see 
I want to look at the linkages and rods on this carburetor and try to see if I can figure out what's going on here. So interesting, this carburetor. I see like a leak there, and it looks like it's been leaking something there. And this looks like some brown fuel residue there. Like what in the world? Is this thing already leaking from day one or what? Hard to tell. Okay, he doesn't have the uh, anti-vibration spring on there, but I don't know that that's the problem here. Okay, the choke does close when I go all the way up. I'm going to start by putting that spring on there that anti-vibration spring. That's not the issue, but it could be an issue. Try to get you a decent shot there. So this little spring here goes around the shaft and it just goes in that thing and prevents it from chattering when it's running. I'm going to reform it a little bit with my finger. It's a very, very thin spring. Try to get in here with these angled ones. There we go. I mutilated it. I mutilated it. Let me pull it through first more before it comes out. Yeah, it's not the best. I've got an extra kink in there that it doesn't really need. There we go. Let's see if I can get that eyelet to close up a little bit better. I'm going to leave it before I get reckless. And it's a little far to the back, that rod. All you got to do is bend it a little bit. You don't want it hitting anything. You want a clear shot. That's already working better, I think. Yeah, now that it's not hitting something. I think it was rubbing on the back there. I'm just going to overbend that a little bit. Now at high speed. Yeah, now it returns. Maybe that's all that was wrong with the governor. Let me fire it up even with this cruddy old, cruddy old fuel line on here and whatever. I'm almost afraid to run something with a fuel line like that. This looks like fish tank line and this, I don't know where they got that. Okay, so below the carb where I had that fresh looking leak and there's been a leak there for a while. I look and what I see is that's the PCV hose and somebody has fixed it with electrical tape. So that's the positive crankcase vent. And that's supposed to be... I need a new one. That's supposed to go onto the carburetor and the carburetor will suck in any crankcase vent. So that's just probably oil that's not getting sucked away with the PCV system dropping out of there. No big deal then. Okay, I just want to check. Not really tight as suspected. Not tight enough as suspected. Actually, 
Do they even have a gasket in there? They better have a gasket in there. I better pull this off and just look. No sense even trying to tune something if you haven't if you're gonna be sucking raw air. Oh yeah, there's one on there. Okay. Just couldn't be sure the way this one has been put together by Johnny Fix It. Okay, I got the jump pack hooked up. I just want to see what this does now, if it still runs away now that this thing is able to return freely and not hit like it was. Oh, got to turn the jump pack on. still runs away. So there's an issue there with the governor assembly or something. Okay, I'm just trying to get it to run at idle here. And it will not. So let me see if I just raise the idle speed up, if that's the only problem with the idle. The running away is a different story. Or has he got the mix all wrong at the low speed? running a bit uneven. I'm gonna try a new plug, something I hadn't looked at yet. Start with the easy stuff. Oh boy. Oh she's been running really rich. Really rich. Real black plug. Does that look a little better? Oh yeah. I thought so too. Get on there. See if it runs any different just by doing just that. It does not like to run evenly.
a little sort of idle, but ain't, ain't happy about it. Okay, so now I gotta figure out what's going on with that governor. So I just adjusted what the screw, screwdriver's on right here. That's the rod coming out of the governor assembly from inside the tractor. Around that rod is a clamp with a bolt on it, nut. That clamps the rod that controls fast slow over to the carburetor. Somebody had been playing with that. What you gotta do is you gotta loosen that, and I can't remember if you go all the way right, I think it was all the way counter, all the way clockwise with the rod, and all the way counterclockwise with the piece, with the lever. Lock it back down. Now, I've got fast and slow, and I realized he had the fast speed nozzle almost closed on this carburetor so it wasn't running good so uh, just off camera I missed the shot but uh, I had it running fast and slow for the very first time let me show you it's still not happy about the idle if I turn it up it seems like almost too fast I still think something else is going on here but I'll show you what I've got. That's what it needed. It needed the governor adjustment, high speed adjustment, low speed adjustment, idle adjustment. I needed more high speed, more low speed, and to adjust the governor, uh, the idle speed, idle stop. Now, as far as ordering that new PCV uh, hose, I need to get the uh, engine information and there's no need to go through John Deere for anything like this. Um, the beautiful thing is, especially Briggs and Stratton and Tecumseh, the old ones, printed into the engine, into the stamping here, is the actual information. I'm going to take a picture of that with my other camera and I'll show you what that looks like. You just need that information. That's part of the engine, not the tractor. No need to pay John Deere prices if they did have it. Just buy it from whoever you want to buy it. And just if anybody's interested in what engine this one has one on it, this one has on it, it's uh, 252707 is the model number. Zero one, the type number, 0171-01. And the serial number starts with code 7901. So that's 1979. 
All right, now to address the fuel issues. This tank, I think I'm just going to take it clean off there. It's going to make this easy. Then we're going to put an inline fuel shutoff, a new filter, screw filter, and uh, all new lines and clamps. Only had a screw in the back. And I have just changed my mind about taking this out because there's really no clearance there that's going to make it easy to get out the front one here. So I'm going to leave that right in place and just change the line on it. Old fuel hose. Clamp barely makes it. That was on the top. Weird PVC looking stuff. Screen. No clamp. Band clamp. We're going to do it all new with the proper spring clamps and quarter inch line. Actual fuel line. Okay, here's my hose. I'm trying to get that on the tank up there. It's giving me a little trouble. I'm going to take this throttle cable out of the way. Maybe I could get in there better with my pliers and sneak in that way. Because what I've been trying off camera is not working to get that clamp up there properly. out of the way or out of the, down out of the way whatever it wants to do maybe now oh I can almost get those players in there all right I'll bring you back when I get it I did a plan B different players fit in there like a dream Now I may have to re readjust my uh, idle and whatever because I moved that throttle cable a little bit, but we'll see when we get there. All right, now let's figure where we want this. Probably somewhere right about there. You could cut them, you could clip them, you can do whatever you want. Getting another clamp here. Going to the other side of the shutoff. Real basic stuff. I'm just doing it on doing it live to just show you how it really doesn't take long to make something way better than what you started with. And then here I'm gonna put the filter here, maybe not here, because then it has to go around this this bend. Let me get this light set up better. It's getting a little dark out. Yeah, you can see pretty good. Another clamp. I cut that one on an angle too much. I like to flatten them off a little bit. There we go. Now, my filter, so I'll be able to shut it off, run it dry, change the filter if ever needed. Or shut it off and run it dry for storage. This has an arrow on it, but if you didn't know, the large part always goes towards the engine. And that one's no different. Another clamp. And I'm going to tip this down just a little bit. Just about level. And do I need to snip a little? If I put that up there, I could zip tie that, give it a good, good home. 
and that's got a nice gravity feed, no loops to uh, trap moisture and a nice direct run. And I've said on some of my other videos, if you hear that in the background, I can't help that. This uh, cicada, it's a bug, and they like to sing in the summertime. It's really not anything you can do about them. There's too many of them, and they're all up in the trees and flying around, and you never get them all. Nobody even tries. That's good. I'm going to put a little zip tie right there just to hold that nice and firm. You don't need that chafing on anything ever. See if I can get that zip tie around. That is not what I had intended. But it'll work. That way gives you a nice, nice, firms it up a little bit. Alright, I'm going to put this uh, filter back on for now because I don't have that uh, elbow piece for today. Let's get these lined up. This one goes all the way through the bottom of the thing there. I'll get that lined up, bring you back, no hurry. Just getting this air cleaner put back on. If ever you're adjusting the carb for the final time, you want to do it with the air cleaner on. Of course, the high speed or the low speed is a little hard to get at, but the high speed you can still get at. But uh, that gives it the most realistic uh, back pressure or however you want to say. Um, it may change a little bit because it's a small restriction going through the filter that might not be there if you were running it wide open. Okay, I just added some fuel. Let's see if we can see some coming into our thing for the first time. I'm not sure if you really can see those kind fill up or not, but let's wait and see for a sec. Well, anyway, we got fuel. <laughs> those, For those of you that needed to see that fuel go, now you can see the line right there. Because uh, my fuel bowl was already full. It wasn't flowing yet. It didn't have a way to get rid of the air. So... It did fill once I started it up just now. I uh, just wanted to verify everything was good there, and it is. So, I'm losing light here, but just wanted to kind of show you where we've been. Give you a little recap. I'm sure you've been with me, but we've got potentially four tires that might hold air now. We have an engine that starts and runs and new fuel lines so we don't blow ourselves up while we're playing. Alright, so in order to get at the transaxle belt, I took the deck off and that'll get a chance to uh, look over the deck also once I get the transaxle going. So I've got the thing tipped up on an angle here just so I can get under here for camera purposes. And I'm following the hydro belt, which is this guy, or not the hydro, this one's a gear tractor. And we are in perfect shape here. What I thought was wrong was that spring, might have been the spring he was talking about that was broken and it wasn't pulling it in, but no, no. And those both roll, it's in the guide here properly, but where it goes wrong, it's right up there. It's not on the engine pulley. That might be all it is. As you can see, got the belt in the groove. That pulley seems a little high to me. I wonder who's been playing down here. But looks like it's in line, so let's roll it. No 
brakes, but we got forward and reverse.